This is episode 35, Getting Motivated and Making Things Happen in Your Life with Melissa. Welcome to Over It and On With It. I'm your host, Christine Hassler, and for over a decade, I've been a life coach, speaker, and author. Each week, you'll hear me work directly with a caller as I coach them through a goal they want to accomplish or an obstacle they may be facing. I'll provide a blend of practical and spiritual advice as well as tangible actions you can apply to your own life. Now, let's get on with the episode. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. So grateful to have you here. Know you have a lot of choices for what you want to tune into and just filled with gratitude to connect with you every week. Really excited about today's call. Cover a lot of ground in my session with Melissa. Overall, it's about getting your mojo back on, really feeling motivated to create what you want and believe in yourself as you do it. It's also about letting go of our obsession with results and bringing more joy and enthusiasm to the process and not waiting for something to happen to us or for us to make our dreams come true. And I have a little confession to make. I love being vulnerable with you all on this show. So you probably know I've mentioned it, that I wanted to do a live life coaching show for years. And for many years, I had this vision of it was going to be a radio call-in show or some production company was going to just discover me. You know, I was going to be discovered. Maybe it was the former actress in me that had this fantasy of just someone being like, oh, yes, we'll just hand you your own radio show. And eventually I realized, oh my gosh, I'm giving away all my power. I'm sitting around waiting for someone to quote unquote discover me rather than just creating this and making it happen myself. And I think that happens to a lot of us. We wait and wait and wait and wait for some external thing or some person to come along and make our dreams come true rather than getting our mojo on and just creating it ourselves. And I have to say, ever since I launched the show back in October, I have felt a significant increase in just my overall joy, enthusiasm, and passion for work. I've truly been happier because I'm making one of my dreams come true. I just love it so much. And sure, the external results are great as well. The show is growing. More and more people are listening. I get emails almost every day from people impacted by the show. But moreover, I just love doing it. I I get so much joy because I'm doing what I love. It doesn't matter that it's not some big national syndicated talk show. And of course, I'm open to that. But what matters is that I'm enjoying the process. My mojo is back because I made it happen. So my encouragement to you today is to stop waiting on anything to happen, to start living your heartfelt desires. No one else is going to come along and grant all your wishes. So if you're a musician, sing or play the guitar, write music every day. If you're an artist, draw, paint every day. If you're a writer, write every day. If you're a coach, find someone to connect with and serve every day. Whatever that thing is that you want to be creating, do it now. It doesn't matter if the form isn't exactly as big or in the exact package that you want. You can express the joy every day or at least every week. The same goes for waiting for someone else. You know, we can't wait for a person to come along and make us feel a certain way. If you're single and you're really longing for a romantic partner, feel love and connection every day. All those things that you want to feel from a partner, generate those feelings inside yourself and just walk around with such an open and full heart instead of down in the dumps and thinking something's missing. If you want to have a child, if you're feeling that you're needing to have a child and maybe you're having fertility struggles right now or it's not happening or you're not with someone, find a way to mother every day. There are so many people, grown-up people out there who need a little mothering. How can you step into those mothering and nurturing qualities every day? We live in a world that is far too dependent on external stimuli. We want something outside of us to come along and make us feel a certain way or create certain results in our life. And we celebrate outcome far more than process. Together, let's remember that we are the source of everything in our life. We do not have 100% control over external events, but we do have choice over how we want to feel. 
So to support you in remembering that, remembering that you are the source, I'm gifting all of my amazing podcast listeners with my free ebook. It's 32 days to uplevel your mind and uplift your heart. So all you need to do is go to christinehassler.com slash ebook and you can download it for free. Again, christinehassler.com slash ebook and you can download it for free. I hope you enjoy it. So before we shift on to my call with Melissa, consider these questions. Are you struggling with your mojo? Having a hard time getting motivated to create the things that you want to create in your life or even feel the way you want to feel? Are you waiting for some external thing or person to come along and grant your wishes or make you feel a certain way? Do you notice that you're more attached to results and not really enjoying the process of your life? And finally, are there people or or a person that you feel like you have to answer to, especially when it comes to your dreams? When they check in with you about your career or your love life, do you feel obligated to have some amazing answer and, and often feel pressure to live up to someone else's expectations? Consider these questions as you listen to my call with Melissa. Melissa, welcome to the show. Happy to have you here. What's your question? Hi, Christine. Thank you so much for having me. Um, My question is how to get my mojo back and my confidence back in my career. What what is your career? (laughs) I'm an actress. You're an actress. And um, yeah, yeah. And I came out of school and felt very doubtful all of a sudden, sort of for the first time in my life, doubted that this was a viable career option. Okay. Um, Yeah, it's something kind of clicked in me and I just didn't um, trust myself anymore, which is strange because there's sort of two things going on. I felt very confident about all of this technique I had just gotten out of drama school and then um, simultaneously trying to face the business after that made me doubtful that I could navigate it successfully. Okay. And how long have you been an actor? Um, My first job was when I was like 16, my first professional job. And how old are you now? now. Okay, 10 years now, so 26. Okay, so were you in undergrad drama school or was it a specialized drama school? What was it? I actually did undergrad and grad back to back at NYU. Okay, okay, at NYU. Mm -hmm. And are you in New York or LA? LA. LA. And when's the last time you felt mojo and how do you know when you have mojo? Um, I feel mojo when I'm on set, um, and I'm working well with the director or I'm in rehearsal and it feels like things are clicking. I don't feel mojo when I'm sitting at home kind of guessing at what I need to do in order to make my career move forward Right. and who to talk to and and all of those sort of things make me doubt myself. Like there should be uh, an easier way or, or I'm not doing something to, and I, in not doing something, I'm holding myself back. Okay. Well, you are, (laughs) (laughs) you you are holding yourself back. And then the main way that you're doing that is the story you're telling yourself about yourself. So I have a feeling self doubt isn't something that all of a sudden just happened since you graduated from drama school. Am I accurate? It felt like it was all of a sudden. So the rest of your life, you've been incredibly confident in everything that you've done, including yourself. You've had no no doubts or no other time in your life where you felt a little bit off-center or insecure. Um, I know it sounds a little crazy, but yeah, I felt almost cocky before ah. that. Ah, okay. Tell me more about that. I, I mean, I felt like the world was my oyster. You know, I kind of felt like this was all going to work out. This was, I was on my path and... You know, you just work hard, you put in the work, and, and then things happen. Okay. And what was your relationship with your parents like? Good. You know, I, I felt like I had a sort of idyllic mm-hmm. childhood. We were military, so we moved around a lot. So like mm-hmm. every two years, we would move to a different place. We mm-hmm. were pretty close because that forced us to be close. Okay. All right. So did you have any big struggles or did you feel like your parents really helped you with life and you felt really safe and, and like you said, things were idyllic? Yeah. Yeah. I felt like they, they were helping me. Mm -hmm. They were very helpful. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so this is, um, a little, you're having a little bit of what I like to call an adult adolescence. 
And a lot of times that can happen when we've had sort of a charmed life growing up. Our parents kind of took care of everything. Um, there weren't any huge, huge struggles that we had to get through. And so you ne- you never like had to question anything. And if things were very certain, you know, even if you moved around a lot, mm-hmm. you knew you could trust your parents and count on your parents and bills are going to be paid and all those kinds of things. And, yeah. you know, life is a lot easier in our teens and even in college. You know, we there's a lot of certainty. We know after 11th grade, we go to 12th grade. We know after high school, we go to college. There's a predictability Mm -hmm. to it. So I think for Mm -hmm. the first time in your life, Melissa, you are dealing with uncertainty and you're dealing with things not totally being taken care of and you're dealing with Mm -hmm. not knowing. And that Mm -hmm. is scary. And that Mm -hmm. fear is what's producing the doubt because This is your first time in your life where you've been 100% responsible for generating your life. So you're in a a major life transition, right? So Mm -hmm. really how you get your mojo back on is really looking at how you're going to become a grown-up and how you're going to sort of get out of this adult lessons and really take command of your life. I don't like to say take control of your life because none of us have control. Control is a bit of an illusion, but really take command of your life. So for example, mm-hmm. if you know that you're happier when you're acting or you're on set, then find a church play, a community theater, children's theater. I don't care what it is, even if you have to do it for free, do something that gets you in that energetic of acting, right? Because like you said, Mm -hmm. if you're just sitting around your house, obviously you're not going to feel very much mojo. The other thing I would say is really look at how much you're kind of directing your life versus waiting for it to happen to you. And this is something that happens in, as we transition from adult adolescence to adulthood, it goes from kind of a reactive approach to life to more of an initiatory approach. Like we're being more proactive in our life and taking responsibility. So let me ask you, what currently are you responsible for in your life? Like what are your grown up responsibilities right now? Well, in terms of my career, it's building relationships with casting and producers and and things like that. And acting wise, it's staying in class and Alexander and, and voice and speech so that I'm always on point uh, when I go into rooms. Um, so those are my major career responsibilities. And then I'm married, so I am taking care of that partnership and nurturing that and uh, taking care of the house and things like that. Okay. And are you responsible for any bills? I have my own sort of money, so I'm responsible for my bills um, okay. that I generate. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. And do you feel like a grown up? I do. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I feel like I've come through the wave of like, oh crap, like paying, you know, doing the rent and all of that. Like that. Yes. I since I sort of had like four years or now three years out of school. So in those three years, I've, I've definitely grown accustomed to those sort of responsibilities and, right. and I feel better about it. Now I don't, feel that settling that happened with the actual like day-to-day responsibilities with my career. Right. Well, and also, like I was saying, kind of in this adult lesson phase, you've been in school except for the past year when you lost your mojo, right? So it kind of corresponds mm-hmm. to when you didn't have that structure that was provided for you and you have mm-hmm. to create the structure yeah. yourself, right? So right. this is sort of the next phase mm-hmm. of, of being kind of a grown up, And also as right. an actor, in a lot of ways, you're an entrepreneur, you know, you're generating right. your own career. Um, right. But if you know, Which I didn't expect, <laughs> right, exactly. Right. Yeah. Because your whole life kind of was a little, a little bit easy. Things came to you easily. Sounds like you got, you found your spouse easily. You know, if you've been married for a while, like things have kind of just come mm-hmm. to you, which is beautiful. And I mm-hmm. still believe things can come to you. However, Melissa, you've got to do a more inspired job of getting yourself out there. So let me change yeah. gears. Let me shift gears for a second. Tell me why you love acting. Um, there's this story um, that uh, the first time I really did a play, uh, a real play, <laughs> was um, The Miracle Worker when I was like 12 years old. Mm-hmm. And um, this director was wonderful and she, um, you know, really taught me the ropes. And I remember feeling this connection 
to the world in a completely different and profound way when I was on stage with other people and seeing how people were affected by it afterwards at a young age, it like changed me. I thought, Oh, this is it. This is what people want. They want to be able to go into a dark theater and cry and feel something and feel connected Mm -hmm. to their humanity and have hope. And, and so I love that. I love being able to offer that. So really what I hear you saying is you love acting because it's a way to connect and it's a way to create, Mm -hmm. yeah, response and feeling in something. Okay. And Mm -hmm. on a scale of one to 10, not including your husband, because he's kind of a built in 10 being feeling so connected, have so much soul food with people, feel really engaged in life and zero being like feeling a little disconnected and isolated. Where are you on the Mm -hmm. spectrum of connection? Like a five. Like a five. Like a okay. Mix. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And why do you think that might be a problem? It's a problem because I I wake up and I don't have any get up or go. I don't mm-hmm. have any, I'm not uh, chasing something. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. 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 But here's the thing. You're looking for something external to do it for you. You're looking for something external to reignite your mojo. Mm -hmm. And and you know, as an actor, you know, when you're studying a part and when you're acting, you can't just react off the other actors. Like imagine doing a monologue or something. You've got to generate that from within. You know, let's say Mm -hmm. you were doing a monologue about a woman who, you know, is talking about just losing the love of her life or something. And she moves through anger and sadness and, and fear and all of those things you'd have to so generate that from inside yourself. And I know you can do this because you're a trained actor. So Mm -hmm. really the opportunity here for you is to to find that inspiration rather than motivation, because motivation is often externally based, to find that inspiration to feel your love and your desire for acting, more specifically connecting. Because when I Mm -hmm. coach people, I always look at, you know, is it the form or is it the essence? And I know you really, really love acting and that's the form that feels most aligned for you. And there's other ways you can get the essence of really what you're longing for besides just acting. So Mm -hmm. it's up to you to start to create opportunity where you feel connected to other people where you feel like you're mm-hmm. engaged beyond just your acting classes. So whether that's volunteering right. or joining a group or doing community theater or whatever it is, or even, mm-hmm. you know, even getting a job as a barista and a really cool coffee bar and engaging with people all day and giving them funny names for their coffee, like even something like that would help. But right. it's, it's like, you've got to do something beyond just going through the motions that you're going through. And, yeah, exactly. and like the other thing in terms of mojo is, is a lot of times, you know, when we're stressed out and overwhelmed, we we're chunked up too high. We're looking at the vision and we don't know how we're going to get there and we have to break it down into step by step. However, when we feel unmotivated, we've got to chunk it up, meaning we've got to look at the bigger vision in terms of what we want. So you've got to remember that first time you acted. You've got to remember how you want to feel. And and that kind of vision has to be the thing that pulls you forward. Right, right. Yeah, maybe that needs to be clearer what that vision is Yeah. in the future. And my other question is, do you want to be an actor or do you want to be famous? <laughs> yeah, yes. That's a very, um, very pointed. I, people have asked me that. Um, or it's been a question that I've heard. Um, yeah, I want to be an actor. I want to be a character actor. So not just the same thing all the time, but okay. transforming into different people to walk okay. in their shoes. Okay, great. So here's my other tip for you. Start creating your own content between Periscope right. <laughs> and YouTube and Instagram and all of that be a character in the middle. I mean, I'm coaching a a woman who wants to develop a career as a stand-up comedian and I'm having her just in her daily life, at least once a day, just turn Periscope on or turn the camera on and post on Instagram and do a little bit. And it's helping her so much, not only build her confidence, but also increase her mojo. So 
it, it sounds like you're waiting for something to give you the experience that you want rather than creating mm-hmm. it. And you're a creative right. person. You're an actor. You've got to start creating it and having fun with it. And when we right. lose our mojo, it's sort of like if, if you, you know, you worked out for a year and then you took a vacation to Europe and ate gelato and pizza and you took three months off and like, you have mm-hmm. to go back to the gym. It's like, you know, you want right. to, but oh my gosh, at first it's hard, you know, and you really <laughs> have to go even when you don't want to. And what I'm saying to you is don't wait for mojo to motivate you. It's kind of like you're waiting to feel your mojo again and your excitement again before you're doing anything. And what I'm saying to you, Melissa, is doing something is going to create the mojo. Right. So even if you don't feel like it, you've got to start. Right. I'm actually with my writing partner right now. Awesome. We are, we are creating something. Yeah. Awesome. There's an uncertainty that comes along with the act of creation itself. Do you know? Um, right. Well, but, and, and we're back to the kind of adult lessons uncertainty thing. So yes, what I want to say yes. about that <laughs> is, is here's the thing. We are way too obsessed with outcome and we do not honor mm-hmm. process as a culture. Right. So really how spirit moves through you, how God uses, God doesn't care about results or goals. It's the process. So you being with your writing partner and the two of you sitting there and creating, that's the magic. That's the right. magic. Right. Who right. cares if it's ever bought and if anyone sees it, how you know mm-hmm. your gifts are used or in the creation process. Right. So please mm-hmm. don't let yourself get seduced by outcome. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I feel that pressure. Do you know, externally, I feel that pressure to, to like prove my worthiness to my relatives and family, mm-hmm. you know, cause once you get a little success, they're like, okay, well, what's the next thing? And you're like, Oh God, <laughs> mm-hmm. that's awful. <laughs> you're just okay. Chasing, you can't even like enjoy the one thing you've done. <laughs> they're like onto the next. Okay. So let's talk about that for a second. So is that a common response you get from them? Yes. Okay. Okay. So how, see, we teach people how to treat us. 100% we teach people how to treat us by how we handle their responses and how we respond to their responses. So let's say I'm your mother or somebody and I say, oh, that's great. But what's next? How do you generally respond? Um, I'll say something, I'm writing something right now, you know, I'll kind of tell them what I am trying to make happen next. What if you said this? Oh, mom, thank you so much for your support. I know that question comes from just really supporting me. And it's really important for me to honor and celebrate each step that I make rather than obsess about the next one, because then I just get way too hard on myself. So can you just celebrate this moment with me? Yeah. Yeah. That is nice. (laughs) Yeah. That feels better. Yeah. So teach people how to treat you. Right. And then you won't get that pressure and you won't get the questions. And it's right. it's a beautiful way to honor yourself and give the other person an opportunity to connect with you and support you in a better way. And if if right. they if they don't respect those boundaries after you ask for them, then it's a different kind of conversation. And as something right. like, you know, I'm noticing that I'm not wanting to talk to you about this stuff because I feel the pressure and just know I, I put enough pressure on myself. I really don't need any external sources. Right. Right. But it's your life, Melissa. You don't owe anybody an explanation. Right. And you don't have anything to prove because here's the thing. I so honor and respect you and acknowledge you for going after your dream for not playing it safe, for not doing the prescribed route, for being willing to be on the uncertainty and to be willing to go after what feels like a dream to you. If if you don't do this now, you'll regret it. So really honor yourself and honor your choices and stand in that confidence and acknowledgement of it is really brave to go after my dream. And I'm going to listen to my intuition And I'm going to listen to this call, this inner call, and I'm going to turn down the naysayers and turn down my own voice of judgment, my own voice of self-doubt, and I'm going to go for it. 
And right now I'm going to give this everything I possibly can so that even if it doesn't lead to something that's a professional career, I know I gave it everything. Yeah. That's where you've got to get to inside yourself. That is the mojo I'm looking for is like honoring myself. I think. Yeah. I think yeah. that that really resonates. Yeah. That that's the piece that might be missing. Great. So I want you to walk somewhere where you can look in the mirror. Okay. I'm here. Okay. And are you standing? I'm standing. Okay. So I want you to imagine this is a scene. Okay. And the scene is a woman, a 26 year old woman is at a phase in her life where she's at a crossroads where she's really about to step fully in to going after her dream. And there's, there's uncertainty and there's a little doubt there, but she really needs right now in this moment to give herself the most amazing self-acknowledgement and we could say inspiring talk or pep talk so that she really sees who she is, recognizes her talent and owns it. Okay. So that's what I want you to do right now out loud with me here supporting you. Okay. It's going to be okay. Keep going. You've got this. You know. Just trust what you know. Trust your gut and and give it away. Give it to others and don't keep it for yourself. Mm. They need you. How does that feel? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) How does that feel? Scary in a crazy way. Mm -hmm. Um, But um, warm and kind Mm -hmm. and um, without the hard driving edge of pursuit. Yeah. To just stand with the piece of me that connected to this in the first Mm -hmm. place. Yep. So every day in the mirror, do this, connect with yourself, connect with your love, connect with your vision, because the truth is you've got this, you've got this, Yeah. but you got to get going right? and enjoy the process, not just be attached to the result. Right. And step into being, really being an adult, really owning your vocation. Right, right. You're you're not playing around anymore. You're not a student. You're ready. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got this. It's exciting. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Was, Was this helpful? That's so wonderful. Yes, hugely. Okay, good. In a way that I couldn't see it myself. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much. I loved hearing how the entire tone in Melissa's voice changed by the end of our call when she really connected to what she loves. I would say she got her mojo back. That's really why I had her play the part of encouraging herself. We all can be much better at playing the part of inner critic or the victim or a pessimist especially when it comes to doing things we feel we don't have control over. As I discussed in the opening, a big reason we lose mojo is because we are waiting for something to happen rather than taking the action steps to make it happen. For example, in Melissa's case, doing something every day that connected her to acting, little videos, writing something, or even just acting the part in her living room to connect her to that energetic, to connect her to the feeling, rather than waiting to get some part, for someone to hire her, for someone else to say yes to her dreams. Mojo started happening when she took power over her dreams. Mojo is a result or byproduct of getting into the energetic alignment of what you want and then taking steps toward it. Do not be dependent on external stimuli to give you mojo. That said, when we start to take steps and see results, that does give us momentum. So it's totally cool to be excited about opportunities that come in. And as they do, be sure you keep up your inner mojo so you can remain inspired. 
I've seen in my own life and coaching so many others that we do the inner work that creates different external results, but then once those results start happening, we stop doing the inner work. We're like, oh, the inner work worked. I've got the external thing. I can just like pull back from all that now. No, 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 no. Let's take the example of acting. Let's say Melissa goes out and gets a part and she stops acting the part at home. That voice of encouragement isn't there as much. She stops creating things on her own because, you know, she's got this big gig now. Once again, she's oriented to the external stimuli. So as things start to happen, as you get results in your life, that's awesome. And to keep that momentum going, keep up the inner work. Don't get lazy. Stay inspired. Be your own catalyst. And please enjoy the process even more than the result. Don't get so seduced by the outcome. A few things I want to highlight from the call. Melissa talked about her family, and when they asked her about her career, she felt this obligation to respond with a big answer. So first I want to say we teach people how to treat us by how we respond to them and energetically how we feel inside. So the more self-conscious we feel or the more shame we feel around a certain situation or our answer, the more other people can pick up on that energetically and the more they may ask about it. So a great way to honor yourself is to give a response like I suggested Melissa give, which is, thank you for your question. I'm really enjoying it. I'm taking steps forward and keeping it brief. We do not owe anyone anything when it comes to a response about our life. Now that said, no one owes us anything either. Sometimes we live in a world where we feel obligated to others and we feel the world owes us something. I've worked so hard on my career. I've worked so hard on myself. Where is the job? Where is the relationship? The universe doesn't owe us anything. We need to take 100% responsibility for co-creating our life and come from that place of gratitude, come from that place of abundance, not coming from a place of being owed. And next, after I had Melissa act the part, She even said she didn't feel the hard drive of pursuit because she was coming from a different place. I've talked about in previous episodes the difference between motivation and inspiration. Motivation is a push, push, push energy that the voice of the inner critic loves to play a part in. Do this, do that. You're not working hard enough. And it works. It makes us do things, but it's not sustainable. And it's incredibly draining. So moving into that energetic of encouraging ourselves really acting the part of feeling it because we're always chasing a feeling. We think we're chasing the form, but it's the feeling, the essence we want. That leads to inspiration. And finally, I talked a little bit about overwhelm. And overwhelm is when we're chunked up too high, we see the vision and we've lost sight of the next step. And so we deal with overwhelm by chunking it down and focusing on step. The reverse of that is when we don't feel we have our mojo. We're procrastinating, we feel kind of blah, and we need to chunk up. We need to get clear on the vision and get excited about how we want to impact the world and the things we want to create in our life. Remember, everyone, we are the directors of our life. Life doesn't happen to us. It happens for us and through us. Be proactive in your own life. So some takeaways for you. Consider some times in your life when you had mojo. Write down what you were thinking, what you were feeling, actions you were taking. Get a really good picture. Use that as a reference point to connect back to that feeling. If you felt it before, you can feel it again. Second, act the part every day. Create the feelings you want to feel. Think about that thing that you want in the future, that external thing. What feelings would it give you? And create those every day. That's how you become the energetic broadcasting system for your dreams. And finally, if there are people in your life that you feel some pressure from, that you feel like you have to quote unquote answer to, practice responding to them in a different way. Be congruent in your own self-acceptance and you'll find other people will accept where you're at much more. So once again, thank you for listening. As you know, I just love connecting with you all so much. I also invite you to share this show with friends or people or your own following if you think it will be beneficial to them. And it always helps the progress of the show if you go onto iTunes and give it a rating or a review or both. I very much appreciate that. Sending you much love and many blessings. Oh, and don't forget your free gift from me, christinehassler.com slash ebook. Go ahead and download it today. 
Much love and many blessings. Thank you for listening to Over at Non With It. I love hearing from you, so please post your comments or questions at christinehasler.com slash podcast. That's also the place you can sign up to receive coaching from me in an upcoming episode. And if you love this show, please share it and subscribe on iTunes. You can find all my social media handles and sign up to be part of my community at christinehasler.com. Until next week, here's to getting over it and on with it. Much love and many blessings. Bye.